I can have your attention here in the media center, we will continue on with today's Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series media availability. And glad to be joined now by Eric Almarola, driver of the number 43 Smithfield Ford for Richard Petty Motorsports. Glad to have Eric back with us. Eric, what's it like to be back in the race car? It's pretty awesome uh, to get that opportunity to get back behind the wheel at Smithfield Ford Fusion and go out um, in race competition and, and turn some laps in practice. I got to uh, get back in the track uh, in the car um, Tuesday at Charlotte, and so I was back on the racetrack. But it's uh, it's always different when you come for race weekend and uh, you go out there and you're getting ready to compete for the weekend. So it felt really good to be back, and and it felt really nice to be able to walk through the garage and and see all of my peers and see the guys in the garage area and to have so many people um, that walk by and, and they're like, hey, welcome back, glad to have you back. Um, it certainly makes me feel good. Outstanding, let's go ahead and open the floor for questions. We'll start here with Rich and we'll work our way around. Rich Thompson, Boston Herald. I was just wondering, is a short track, short race, kind of the ideal to, to setting to get your sea legs back? Um, not really, um, you know, I think, uh, we didn't script it that way. I think it's a great place uh, to come back, but it wasn't, you know, when we looked at the schedule, it wasn't like we just decided, oh, Loudon's the place. Um, the doctors from the very beginning were very clear with me uh, with this injury. They were like eight to 12 weeks at best. Um, you're, you're, you're more probable to look up to upwards of 16 weeks. Um, and so I was, I was concerned about uh, the later <laughs> uh, return. And so I was uh, really diligent with my recovery and my rehab and, and all of my therapy. So um, to be able to come back right at eight weeks um, just so happened to be Loud, New Hampshire. And uh, of all the tracks that, you know, you look at on the schedule, this is certainly the one that has the least amount of loading um, as far as banking is concerned and speed. So um, this is a great racetrack for me to come back and sort of, um, you know, knock the cobwebs off and get back in the race car and, you know, not really put my spine through a lot of loading for a long period of time. Um, I think Charlotte, Texas, um, Dover, those kind of places would probably be a lot worse. Uh, but I feel great. Uh, we, I ran a lot of laps at, at Charlotte. We were there for four hours, and I was pretty much in the car uh, a large majority of the time. And I felt great inside the car. So um, I don't really foresee any issues. I might have some soreness um, and some you know, spottiness uh, after the race, but I think that's to be expected as far as my doctors are concerned. Go next to Matt, then to Amy. Matthew Warner's Race Pro Weekly, WWLP, NBC, Springfield. Eric, can, after that practice there, can you just talk about the VHT on the track? What do you think it's going to be like on Sunday? Yeah, I think uh, the, it's, it's certainly moved the typical uh, racing uh, lane around uh, what we typically see here. So um, it has been sort of... Uh, a new racetrack, so to speak, really. We, we typically run in that second lane off of the yellow line, and we usually dread um, getting up over that seam. We, you, you know, when you look back at, at video of the races, all of the cars really try and keep their right sides inside of that seam. Well, now that that, that third lane has the, uh, the PJ1 in it, um, you see a lot of cars entering in that lane, straddling that, that seam, and uh, it certainly is, has sort of thrown everybody um, a new racetrack here, and I think uh, it's, it's going to change sort of the way we approach the racetrack, the way we attack the corners. Go to Amy, then to Pat, then to Jeff. Amy here up Race Pro Weekly. Um, during your absence, how do you feel about the drivers that did take the wheel of the number 43 car, and what ways did you help them in there? Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's a tough thing for, for anybody to kind of get thrown into, uh, you know, a seat that's it's, uh, it's not their race car. They're trying to pitch in and, and, and do their part um, to be a, a relief driver. And so I was really happy and really grateful for, for the guys that stepped in with Regan and Billy and, and Daryl um, to come and, and you know, give their, their effort and their two cents. And it was really good for our race team also to kind of see because for the last, you know, almost six years now, they've had one guy giving them feedback, um, you know, at least on the 43 car. So to have a few other guys get in the car and sort of uh, give their two cents and really for, you know, a lot of their comments to, to match up with some of the things that I've been saying about the race cars, um, at least for this year. So 
uh, that was really nice, uh, and, and I'm really thankful for those guys to be able to step in sort of on moment's notice and, uh, and get behind the wheel and, and go do a good job because, you know, I've, I've talked a lot about it this week, but the sport changes so fast, the setups, the cars, everybody continues to evolve and get faster and faster and faster. And so um, you can't really just take eight weeks off and show up to the racetrack and go ride around. It, you still have to go compete. You still have to go try things. And in a way, um, it really sort of opened the box for our team to go and, and try some things that, um, you know, we, we s sometimes get stuck in a rut and sort of do some things and, and kind of get this little box that we live in and, and don't really get much outside of that. So to have some other drivers come in, not really have points or anything really on the line for those guys and sort of um, just go at it with an open mind, it was, it was really good. And, and I think Drew and all the guys on my team um, really rallied together and, and they've continued to make the cars better and better and better. Um, so that way when I get back in the car, we can hit the ground running. Go next to Pat, then to Jeff, then to Jerry. Pat Thor, NASCAR.com. What are your expectations for yourself and for the 43 team the rest of the year now? Uh, just to honestly pick up where we left off. I thought uh, before I wrecked at, at Kansas, we, you know, we were a top 15 uh, car. We, we, we consistently ran there. We finished ninth at Richmond. We finished fourth at Talladega. I was really excited about Kansas. We had a really good run at Kansas um, going in the beginning of the race. We had some uh, issues mid part of the race, and then we wrecked. And I thought we, you know, even middle part of the race, when we had kind of gotten back around 20th, I thought that we had a good enough car to, to rally back. And so I think really for us, it's really about picking back up where we left off. Um, I'd love to sit here and tell you, oh, we're going to go out and win this weekend. But um, we have to be realistic and, and, and understand where our cars are at. And right now for us, it's about getting back to a top 15, top 10 car. And if we can do that, we'll put ourselves in position to strategize to maybe try and, and, and pull a win out. Um, but, you know, you can't do that from running 20th. You can't do that from running 22nd because a guy that's running 12 spots ahead of you is also going to gamble on fuel. So you have to be running up front to be able to capitalize on opportunities like that. And so for, for the 43 team and, and all of us on the Smithfield Ford Fusion, uh, it's about getting this car to, to running up to where we can take those opportunities and gamble on two tires or no tires or fuel strategy um, to go and try and get us a win here at the, uh, the close of the year. Jeff? Jeff Gluck from jeffgluck.com. Eric, as you take a step back and you were watching the races on TV and um, having sort of that experience that you don't usually get when you're in the car, Anything jump out at you over the course of these eight weeks where you're like, huh, you know, uh, this is some new perspective I didn't have before? Yeah, that I wish we had in-car cameras on every race car. <laughs> Sitting at home watching on TV, um, you know, I, I thought uh, the experience that I got from watching was, was rather eye-opening. Um, you know, the truth be known, for the last six years, I haven't watched many cup races on TV. So um, to, to sit at home and, you know, have my, my tablets out and have – lap times and scanners and, and everything going and watching the race and listening to the broadcast, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really uh, informative. Uh, you can really get a lot from, uh, from watching the race and even though you're not there. And so um, it was a great way for me to keep up with what was going on with the team, what was going on with the changes during the race and the pit stops. But from watching the broadcast, I thought – that it would be so cool to, to have cameras in all the race cars. Um, you know, when you, see, um, when you see a guy win a race, you know, for his first time, how cool would that be to get his reaction inside the car, um, you know, with an in-car camera? Or when you see uh, somebody having trouble to, to be able to pan to their in-car camera and see uh, their reaction, their frustration. So I feel like, um, you know, from watching at home, that's one thing that I wish we could get is, is more in-car cameras. Um, inside all these race cars just to be able to show the fan um, what the driver's going through, not only from just racing, uh, but their reactions and their emotions sort of in the moment. Go to Jerry, then back to Matthew. Yeah. Jerry Jordan, KKTires.net, here on Hatch Track 2. First one is, with NASCAR's you know, strict testing policy, do you feel like you were stealing cookies on Tuesday when you were out there at Charlotte? <laughs> no, not really. Um, you know, they, they have a, a strict testing policy, and we went there, and we had plenty of uh, NASCAR personnel there, and 
Um, you know, they, they were very aware that we weren't going there. We weren't testing parts and pieces. We weren't testing setups. Um, we went there. We made a couple laps. We made a few small changes just to get the, the balance where I wanted it. And then after that, it was about just making long runs to make sure that my back um, could hold up to the, the loads and, and, and the G-forces uh, during, you know, a fuel run. So we didn't really gain anything out of, out of going there. And it's important um, for NASCAR to be able to do that, to let these guys, and including myself and, and Dell Jr., when he came back, um, to go and, and test when you're coming back from a medical um, injury because you don't want to waste the, the team's effort to fly all the way to Loudon, New Hampshire, and me have never turned a lap on a racetrack. And even though I feel great, my CT scans look good, my MRIs look good, and I go out there and my first lap on the racetrack, I'm like, oh, man, I've, I've got a lot of pain. I don't know if I can do this. It just really sets everything back, and it sort of, you know, really screws the race team out of that whole weekend because now you're trying to change seats and, and put another driver in when he wasn't, you know, planning on being there. So it was great for, for NASCAR to allow us to go, um, let me run. I think I ran probably close to 100 laps, and I had no pain, so it was, it was easy for the doctors to say, you're good to go. Second, um, you were critical of the photographers at the incident in Kansas. Uh, you talked about this. Yep. There has been a rule enforcement or policy change for photographers on how they take photos or where you typically. Were you aware of that? How does that make you feel now? Yeah, I was, and I was involved with NASCAR on, on talking about it. And, and really, here's the deal is, is that, um, and I think every photographer would appreciate this or understand this, but there's no photographer that's allowed in the infield care center. Right, as there's that's a private area. That's for the doctors and everybody for, to work on the driver. And no photographer in their right mind would just bust up in the infield care center and start taking pictures of a driver um, in there. But you know, being out on the racetrack, obviously I'm out in a public setting. But I was really in a mobile infield care center. You know, I, that I had doctors and, and track safety crew and, and a lot of people uh, working on me, trying to help me. Um, you know, sort of immobilize my spine try and help me get out of the car, and I was in a very vulnerable position. And so I felt um, like the photographers uh, just didn't respect that privacy. And, and, and I understand that they're trying to go in there and, and snap their photo, um, but I felt like it was up to, to NASCAR to maybe help with that and help keep the, the perimeter back. And, um, and, and so we've talked about that. We've had a lot of discussion about that. And um, I think now they're aware, and, and I don't think it'll happen again. Matthew? Eric, just a follow-up, uh, four different series here this weekend. Three of them are kind of using the same tire. The Modifieds are using Hoosier. Do you think there will be any effect on the track with the Hoosier rubber when you guys go out there for practice uh, tomorrow morning? Yeah, it always changes. I mean, just today, um, you know, the Modifieds practiced for an hour and a half, and then we rolled out for uh, practice this morning. So um, the track changes as that Hoosier, w Hoosier rubber wears off, and, and we, you know, put our own rubber down. So... Um, you know, but it's nothing new. Uh, it's, it's the same thing that's been happening every time we come to New Hampshire for the last, as long as I can remember, probably longer than Ryan Newman's been coming here, so, um, which is a long time. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't, I, I, it's, it's not different. You know, we always show up and there's always modifieds and there's always different rubber on the racetrack, so um, I don't think that's a big deal for us. Any additional questions for Eric? Let's go to Lee. You have two cups of coffee. You're I'm double, double fist. You're double fisting coffee. Hey, so so do you feel 100%? I mean, you know, after really getting out there and shaking down the car, do you feel 100% now? I do. Um, I really do. I think. <laughs> I do. I feel. Uh, I feel great. You know, I, I feel like I did. Uh, you know, pre-crash. So um, I, I think. You know, based on the, the word that I've gotten from the doctors, Dr. Petty and Dr. Cork, I went again yesterday morning uh, to, to, the, uh, to Charlotte Medical Center there to get tested, and they looked at everything, and, and everything looks great. I have, no, uh, I have no concern based on their doctor's recommendation that I can get back in the race car, and, and physically I feel great. So um, there's some muscles, I think, that after the race on Sunday might be a little sore or tired um, just because I've been out of the race car for two months, but... Um, that'll come back. It, even even when you start out the year after taking all winter off, um, you know, the first few races, there's muscles that you're like, man, I haven't used those in a few months. But um, after you get back in the race car week after week for a few weeks, it, it, it gets back to normal. 
Eric, it's so good to have you back here. Yeah. Uh, good luck the rest of the weekend going forward the rest of the season. Glad to be back. Take care.